So I kind of wanted a guard tower. Hey, this is Scattercraft and I'm Josh. Do I need another tower? Probably not. Did I make one anyways? Yes, I did. Okay, so first I gotta figure out what size I want this to be. And I think 10 inches is about right. That's about my tallest building. I want it to be a little bit higher than that. Start with a fresh blade here. Disposed properly in my asparagus jar. So using a speed square here, I'm going to cut out the basic shape of the square for the octagon I want to build the tower out of. So I want to make this 6x6, six six, so all my basic tiles are 3x3, three three, so I could place different city tiles around it and it would look nice. I realized the bricks were going to be a problem, so I needed to trim it down to accommodate for them. Then I laid out the center lines and then transferred them onto a piece of scrap to make it real easy. And that gives me a perfect 45 or perfect enough. And I just do that with all four sides. And now I have eight. I'm just gonna line out the walls here, 10 inches long and about two inches wide. And I just cut them freehand. It's pretty easy to follow the line. And do seven more. And that one. I need a second octagon for the top, so I cut that out with the first one as a guide. Then I glue and square up all the sides. And I stopped here because I decided I wanted to put some rocks in the bottom to add a lot of weight. These are just cheap dollar store rocks. And I'm just gonna glue the crap out of them and put them on the bottom here. And look at how sturdy that makes it. And then I'll just finish up and close off the last few sides. And then I put the top on. And it looks pretty good so far. I can't really tell which side has the weight. It really wants to stay standing up. And now I need to cut a ton of bricks on the Proxon. You can do this with a knife too. This is just way faster. And I made a ton of them. I just line up and cut multiples at once for the bricks to get the actual size. I just eyeballed the size here, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you get nice little bricks. A nice big pile of them. And just take a coffee can, or a peanut can like I have, and fill it with more of those dollar store rocks. and add the bricks. And then shake it until you get the desired texture. And those look pretty good. And a little secret, instead of picking through all the bricks, you can just blow on them and that'll separate them all out real quick. Better to have a few extra bricks to get started. I 
laying the bricks on one side and then decided that that wasn't really going to work the best way. It'd be better to go all the way around since I have to custom cut every single one of these. I made a little template and kept cutting out the custom corners. They all needed to be trimmed though to fit, and it was a real pain because it took a long time. But the look was worth it. You see I cut the back of those corner pieces off straight, which worked a lot faster and got the same effect. I realized I had to do one more row so I could lay the top out. I just continue the top in an offset pattern and filled all the little corners. And that's looking pretty good. I used Flaster to give a gauge of how much space I needed here. I wanted to make sure I could take a mini in and out very well and that larger and smaller minis would fit okay. And then finished out the lower balcony. I use my tried and true wood method where I take a brass brush Scrape in the wood pattern, and then cut it thin, and repeat over and over again until I have a ton of planks. Then I'm just going to start covering the balcony. By using the foam core in the middle, it kind of stops me from having to use wood, which I don't mind wood, it's just that it doesn't take the grain as nicely, and this looks a lot better. It's weird that wood doesn't look like wood when it's painted, foam looks a lot more like wood. Also put a lower ring around the bottom and some big support timbers to give it a rugged look. And then I started laying out the top. And trim that all out. Once that was finished I was able to put some uprights all the way around. So I made a jig out of coffee stirs that I glued to my mat. This gave me a guide to make it real easy to make the upper parts because they were really fiddly. And just like that. And then I made eight of them. And attached those with glue as well. It's good to clean your workspace once in a while with a project like this. I laid out the balcony door, cut to fit, and took out all the bricks that were in the way. And built a little door. The 
Carrera was simple but looked great. I wanted to put a hatch on the top that would be accessed by a ladder from within. I found it was a lot easier to lay it out on foam core, cut it out, and then add it later instead of try to build it directly on top. I did the same with the other door, ripped out the bricks, and glued the hatch in. Now on everybody's favorite part, the Mod Podge. It just makes it come to life. You finally get to see what your project's gonna look like all together in one uniform color. And that is looking awesome. I am so stoked right now. So I used a pewter gray craft paint to base out the brick. And burnt umber to base out all the wood pieces. And now we're starting to see what it's gonna look like. It's still looking a little Playmobil though. So we need to do a dry brushing to give it a real look. So I use light mocha to dry brush the bricks. And an off-white called Antique Parchment as a final dry brush for the bricks. And then I use the same light mocha to dry brush the wood. This is gonna look really light and really cartoony. But once you black wash it, it'll look really good. Then I used a gun metal for all the little metal pieces on the doors. And I used the same gun metal for all the metal pieces on the hatch. And here it is, ready to be blackwashed. It definitely looks playable at this time. But just wait, here comes the good part. I very liberally blackwashed everything. And here's the finished project. This was a big project. If you made it to the end, thanks so much for sticking it out. I didn't realize how big of a project this was going to be. I really underestimated what it would take to lay the bricks on this in a nice octagon shape. And I restarted setting these bricks three different times before I got what I liked. I had to cut custom pieces for every single corner piece all the way up every side of this tower. And that took a lot of time. But I definitely think it was worth it. It really gave it a nice, sharp, clean edge. I wanted it to feel like this was actually built for battle. I wanted it to feel like you could see the tower guards taking shifts in it, living in it, fighting out of it. I really wanted it to feel more real. So I used a lot of wood on this to give it more of a rugged look. Some of you might have noticed that there's no entrance anywhere on this tower at the base. And that's actually by design. My plan is to build this eventually into a larger set and I wanted to have a gatehouse that came off and it's going to have an entrance through there. I can always add later where I want the door to be but I wanted to make sure that it was the right height so I didn't add it now. Which is fine, it'll be easy to add later. I really like how heavy this feels with the rocks, it gives it a lot of weight and really makes it feel very heavy duty. I really wanted to be able to use minis in this and I wanted them to be in the lower balcony area and fit well and I also wanted them to be able to fit well up top as well so they can see over the edge. I plan to build a full castle set down the road based off of this tower, but you know, that's 
down the road. But you never know. I hope this inspired you to go out and build your own tower to wow your players. If you like this project, please click the subscribe button and the notification icon so you can see when my next project posts. I honestly hope you go out there and try this. It's really fun to do and it's really rewarding when you're done. Please give it a try. Also, thanks so much for watching Scattercraft.